Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with the first Western North Carolina Fishing Report of 2022 with Dale Collins of Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Happy New Year, Dale. Happy New Year, man. Hope uh, hope everybody's able to get out there and uh, get fishy with some new gear that they got over Christmas and um, and have a, have a great 2022 fishing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we kind of feels like winter uh in our neck of the woods but you know i was looking at your weather before we started recording and you know you're still getting to kind of what i would call fishable temperatures in the upper 40s low 50s during the day absolutely you know it's um it it seems like winter just now showed up january 2nd we we had our uh first winter weather of the season begin to move in and uh, I'm sure uh, folks all across the southeast experienced it. It was 71 moment, and then the next moment there's snow. Um, so, you know, we're seeing those systems come through, but for the most part in the valley, uh, we're not seeing any accumulations or any of these weather events. Uh, it certainly could happen, um, but yeah, we're you know, if you're if you're fishing, you know, your window is 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, and uh, just try to stay somewhere where the sun is on the water. Uh, that's the key and watch your elevation, you know, don't, don't try to climb. Certainly you want to be in that 2000, you know, the 2200, uh, foot elevation, uh, range for the water. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're seeing some really, uh, middle forties, maybe lower 50 afternoons and, uh, some really small, uh, black stone fly hatches coming off the water. And it's the kind of hatch where it's going to be, they can be thick. You know, you look down and you got something crawling on your leg and on your arm or sitting on your face. Um, they're, you know, bluing olives are certainly prevalent too. So it's a good time. You know, if you want to get out and kind of have a place to yourself, it's a good time to be fishing. Yeah. And it's also that time of year where you're actually the, the releases on the tuck are bringing warm water downstream. That's exactly right. So, you know, with that water coming out of the bottom of the lake, it's warmer than the air in most of these instances. So, um, you know, by the time, you know, it, it could be a 20 degree night. Um, and certainly if there's no generation there at 8 a.m. when the generation shows up, you can see the water temp go from, you know, the upper thirties to the mid forties, maybe even close to 50, depending on, um, flows and, and air temperature and whatnot. But yeah, and that certainly gets the fish excited, gets them moving. Um, and they just, they really start eating when that water warms up. Yeah, and so from an approach, right, obviously you get to have a nice long breakfast, maybe have an extra cup of coffee or two, but, you know, do you kind of start the day nymphing or are you kind of, you know, doing dry dropper? You know, what are you, what's your strategy to kind of put fish in the net this time of year? Yeah, I, I think if you want to put fish in the net, I think you, you start with a double nymph rig. Um, try, to, try to, you know, a big and a small fly, um, as small as you can handle. Um, but like your, your black, Copper Johns are going to be good imitations, black hair's ears, things like that. Um, and then, you know, if, if you're satisfied with what you've got in the net, you want to see if you can convince some fish to rise or you're seeing a hatch and seeing some fish responding to the hatch, then, yeah, switch over to a dry dropper. Uh, for your dropper, I'd say on, like, the emerger side, I wouldn't even, you know, go with, like, another nymph. I'd just say on the emerger side, soft tackle, um, and, uh, and drop that off of a dry fly. Um, maybe even a dry, dry setup, you know, if they're eating really small stuff and you can't see that, uh, on the water, then fish it behind uh, another dry fly that you can see. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, also uh, the holiday season makes people think about what they're going to do next summer. And you've got big news cause you guys are going back to Montana, right? Absolutely, man. We are, we're going to the beautiful land of Yellowstone. So Southwest Montana. Uh, we'll be there with, uh, the crew from Big Sky Anglers at the Golden Stone Inn. Uh, our dates, uh, we got two trips going. The first trip is August 7th through the 13th and then August 14th through the 20th. And that's kind of prime, you know, these, these dates are pretty special. That's kind of prime, you know, hopper season, uh, for that, that, that pocket of the world. Um, and, you know, we're floating the, uh, Henry's Fork of the Snake over in Idaho, the Madison, and then certainly playing around in Yellowstone. So pretty incredible trip. Uh, definitely a great way to do Montana without having to plan anything. And uh, I think we're actually even able to fly into West Yellowstone this year as opposed to both. So um, definitely um, kind of excited about that, shortening that drive uh, once we get there. Yeah, absolutely. So what's the best way for folks to find out? Go to the website, call the shop. 
yeah, go to the website. We've got a travel tab. You can click on it. has all the information there. Uh, certainly uh, feel free to call the shop. Uh, and we've got a few podcasts and uh, YouTube videos on uh, on the trip as well. So uh, pretty pretty spectacular program that uh, Big Sky Anglers uh, set us up with there. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a few spots left. We are we are booking it. We've had a few books already. So uh, we take five guests each trip. So uh, it it, uh, it will fill up I think pretty quick here over the next few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Particularly with show season upon us. And, you know, folks, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. We'll give you guys a pass because it's the new year, but we love questions at the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us. You can drop them in the comments to our posts on social media or send them to us on our Facebook or Instagram page. And, you know, if we use your question, as always, I will send you some Articulate Fly swag and we will have a drawing for something cool from the shop at the end of 2022. And, you know, next time around, we're going to draw among all the folks that send in questions for 2021. What are we drawing for, Dale? We're going to do a uh, Tuck Fly Shop logo uh, shirt and hat combo, and uh, we'll get that mailed out to the winner. Yeah, well, there you go. And uh, so tune in. uh, If you asked a question in 2021, tune in next time and see if you won. And before I let you go, you know, since the fishing is good, you know, you want to let folks know your locations and your hours. So if they need a spool of tippet or need to get get a few flies, they can drop by and say hi. Absolutely. You know, definitely stop by uh, the shops, get the get the local what's going on that day. Uh, so three depot street in Bryson city, downtown Bryson city, right across from the, the train depot there, the great smoky mountain railroad. And then over in Silva, the trout capital of North Carolina, downtown there sandwiched right in between a couple of fantastic bookstores. And then that's your fun field fact of the day, Marvin. I appreciate and then, that. uh, downtown Waynesville there, uh, on, uh, 110 depot street. So another depot street, but we're nine to five. That's our winter hours. And uh, nine to five, we're going to be Monday through Saturday, closed on Sunday. Yeah, and and in the, in your, in the fact for uh, for Waynesville is uh, it's close to a really good coffee shop. It is. Gosh, <laughs> it's, it's a common theme about our shops is that we we've, we've got some fantastic coffee around all our shops. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, folks, I hope you all have a great 2022 and a fishy 2022. Happy New Year, everybody! Happy New Year, Dale. You too, Marvin. <laughs>